Hi there, and welcome to this data toboggan lightning session. And we'll be looking at applying the Azure well-architected framework to Azure Synapse Analytics. There's a little bit about me. My name's Andy Cutler, and I'm an independent consultant and contractor, and I work primarily with the Azure Data Platform and Power BI. If you scan the QR code, it'll take you to my Twitter, connect with me, and let's carry on the conversation online. Now, when we're looking at what the Azure well-architected framework is, it's a set of five pillars that Microsoft have published, and each of these five pillars can help an organization improve their Azure workloads and infrastructure quality. We can actually apply features and settings from both dedicated SQL pools and serverless SQL pools to these five pillars. Now, the first pillar we'll look at is cost optimization. We're looking to maximize value and minimize costs. Now, with dedicated SQL pools, we've got a concept of the DWU, the Data Warehouse Unit. What we can do is we can scale up and down our dedicated SQL pools to match our workload. It is a manual operation, but we can scale up and down and also pause to optimize what we're using. We also can use reserve pricing for one and three years, and that can reduce the cost of those DWUs up to 65%. When we're looking at serverless SQL pools, the cost is slightly different. It's based on the amount of data processed, roughly around $5 per one terabyte. So what we wanna do is we wanna to look to optimize the data types and where possible use Parquet file format. In terms of operational excellence, with dedicated SQL pools, we can actually use database projects in SQL Server Data Tools and Azure Data Studio to implement a CI CD process, and we can integrate that with Azure DevOps to deploy code changes. We can also monitor using Azure Monitor. We can surface metrics and alerts. We can also log using Azure Log Analytics. Now with serverless SQL pools, we don't currently have SSDT support, but Synapse Studio does have Git integration that we can use to source control our scripts. We can also use Azure Monitor as well to surface metrics around how much data has been processed so we can track costs, the login attempts, and the SQL requests against our serverless SQL pools. For performance efficiency, with dedicated SQL pools, Currently, the DWU scaling is not an online process, so we can resize offline to match our workload at a specific point during the day. We've got this concept of workload classification in which we can classify an incoming workload, we can assess the importance of that workload, and actually isolate the resources required to complete that request. With serverless SQL pools, the underlying engine that has been built, this Polaris engine, there's absolutely no workload settings or classification. We do, don't need to scale the service, but during live workload execution, resources are being given to the serverless SQL pools to complete a request. In terms of reliability, with dedicated SQL pools, whilst the dedicated SQL pool is running, automatic restore points will be created during the day, and they're available for up to seven days. If you do scale and pause, then using user-defined restore points is a great way of tagging and restoring to a specific point in time. And we can enable Geo Backup, which will back up our dedicated SQL pool to a paired region. Now with serverless SQL pools, we've got automatic fault tolerance in terms of automatically restarting a query process. Now this is all under the bonnet and it's seamless to the executor of the query. And lastly, we've got security. So with dedicated SQL pools, we can integrate Active Directory groups and users and use SQL logins to secure objects. We can encrypt data at rest with TDE. 
but we can also enable Azure Defender and that will scan our dedicated SQL pool for vulnerabilities and report on it. And we can also use firewall rules and private endpoints and that's across Synapse services. And with serverless SQL pools, we again can use Active Directory groups and users and SQL logins to secure database objects. However, because the data itself sits outside of the serverless SQL pool, we've got security that needs applying to that external storage. Now here are four links for you to learn a little bit more about the framework, but also look at Azure Advisor and Advisor Score, which will score your current implementation. So I hope you've enjoyed this session and I hope you enjoy the rest of Data Toboggan. Thank you.